your name is floating around and then you you know you're getting a lot of work and then there's there's two records that you're on that really stand out and that's pretty much you know i was familiar with a lot of the, the soundtrack records and then the heavy d record on the blue funk but then you know obviously you're doing the r&b vein but then you're sliding over you're still doing the hip-hop situation and it's two dope records that you did you were part of you collaborated with. obviously one is the mob deeps temperatures rising and then the pete rock and co smooth take you there you, you know one two combination uh, can you talk about uh, going into uh, the studio sessions and creating those records and what was the process and your role in that collaboration? Sure. Um, at that point, I was estranged from Uptown. I don't think that I was signed to... I might have been signed to Uptown still, but I was definitely like, I'm not doing a record with y'all. And I think maybe they didn't believe me, but I was so serious. Um, so at that point, I kind of got black gold, I guess, because I was like very 10 toes down on the fact that like after, you know, I had been so compliant and you have to realize I was, I was, I was offered a very lucrative deal with by Quincy Jones. Quincy flew me out to his house for the whole nine. I was going to sign with Quest, but other stuff happened. We can get to that, to that if you want. But it made me bitter when they were trying to have me sing songs about having abortions and shit like that. And I'm like, that's not who I am. That's why um, when um, Jackie had said, you know, how Andre wanted her to be, I was like, I can relate because they wanted me to sing a song about an abortion. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. And I, I don't care if y'all think I'm difficult because I'm telling you I'm not doing that. So at that point, I was like really jaded and bitter, like with, the, the, the way they try to like just control you. So I was like, I'm cool with just writing and living my life. I don't need to be no artist. I'm, this is not exciting to me. Like y'all think I'm doing this for fame and form and fashion. I signed autographs at 11. So I'm not excited by this. I want to be an artist. I want to really represent myself and, 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 and be comfortable being my true self. Um, so hip hop really kind of showed me love in a time where I was black boy, but all of the producers and stuff, they loved me. They would always call me like I was working with everybody. Um, not just them songs. I did so much stuff. So um, Pete and I, you know, had established a relationship through the whole Uptown affiliation. And he were calling me to do, you know, a lot of different stuff we had already done, got me waiting. So I remember him calling me and saying, you know, come down to Green Street. CL had done his rap, but they didn't have a hook. They didn't have like a concept. But I had a song um, that I had written for myself. And it was CJ, what you gonna do? You know, you could, so I just took it and recycled it and took CL and replaced CJ, which is my initial. And that's how we came up with Take so that was like a real quick session because I already had it written. It just fit. Um, because of Take You There is how I wound up getting on Mob Deep's project because Tip, you know, loved the song. But then, you know, as hip hop producers, it's that healthy competition. So he was like telling me about a project that he had gotten, you know, uh, commission to work on, which was Mob D, but, you know, I was familiar with them a little bit from the Juvenile Hell, I think, album, but I didn't really know, you know, that they were like the buzz of, of New York at the time. So uh, uh, they had, um, Loud had hired him to work with Havoc on a few of the joints, and he was like, I got this joint I want you to work on, maybe a year before we even did it, and I remember him saying, I want you to I want you to kill it like you did that peak, you know, that healthy competition. Like, yeah, I want to give me a banger with her, you know. You know, the producers had that healthy, healthy level of competition. So um, maybe about a year later, we did the session. Um, it was Tip and Havoc. He wasn't there. I think he was sick at the time. 
And um, they just had me come in and I remember it was being like a one take Jake type of thing. And I was really, I didn't like that either when it first came out, <laughs> only because I didn't think he was going to use all of the um, stuff at the end. Uh, I thought that he was just going to, you know, take a hook, maybe a riff here or whatever, but it's like a whole two minutes and I'm my worst critic. So I'm like, oh, this sounds horrible. Why did he leave that? <laughs> But um, I definitely was wrong in that because that's one of the songs that, that people talk about the most that I've worked on. And, and uh, we did the remix, so, uh, Temperatures Rising remix that uh, I had, I wrote, and I also did the bass line. I came up with the bass line and I had Tip singing the octave lower under me. I remember that. Um, I also did Survival of the Team Fittest remix with Marv D and G. I was doing a lot of stuff with the GOD Part 3 remix. I was doing a lot of stuff with, 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 with Marv D and Loud. They definitely showed me love in a time where, like, I wasn't really working in R&B like that, you know? Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of Halftime Chat. Please remember to subscribe, share, and comment. But most importantly, why don't you become a member of Halftime Chat? We've got amazing videos, amazing perks, and um, being able to support the channel. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. I never participated in that channel. Hey, the somewhere in between. Or even loving us, on which I didn't miss you. What was it like growing up? Oh, no, 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 okay, you're okay. Yep.